Hello, in this video, I am gonna cover the nav bar. So, what is a nav bar? Um, let me refresh the page so it says blank, tells me some code I'll do before. So, a nav bar is one of these that you would get at the top of your website. It may span the entire width of the website, it may not, it depends on its positioning. We'll make it so it's similar to this, so it spans the entirety. So, nav bar stands for navigation bar, as I think you've already guessed. So, if we go to our code, if you was to put it within the container itself, it will be limited by the container's width. And with a regular container class, on a big screen like this, you will have, you know, you know, sort of empty space on either side. And that is, you know, that may be what you want. If we go to eBay, they actually have sort of two nav bars. You've got this one here with this, you know, full horizontal line. And then we have, well, just this part here so this is also kind of like a nav bar as is this so you know both are useful so if you put it outside here we get a full width one put it in here it's limited by the container if you put container that's fluid that's all the way but remember there is some padding on the side and if you was to put it in a column then you would actually you know just demand a column you know column spaces that it is spanning and you can do that it's totally up to you you may not want to put it at the top of the website it may just be at one little section of the website so what you want to do is put a nav tag and this requires a class of nav bar nav bar dash expand dash lg so this means once it hits the large screen size large breakpoint then it expands otherwise it goes you know more compact and you know feel free to experiment with this nav bar dash dark and bg dash dark as well okay so you can do light as well so this nav bar dash dark refers to the actual items in there like the text the buttons they're going to be lot there if it's dark if we set, use the dark class they're going to be light colored because they need to show up on the dark background and if this is light then they'll be dark colored because they need to show up on the light background so feel free to experiment with that plus i will provide a link to the nav bar link in the description and in there you can see how to add images you can see in there how to do you know we're going to cover quite a lot of it but you can see how to you know do all sorts of stuff like color schemes as well obviously we're covering this one right here okay so what we want to do now is put a div and we're going to put a class of container dash fluid this is one of the rare instances you know it's all right to have more than one container because you may not want your content to be in a fluid container you may want it more like this and now in here we're gonna have all of the content so first of all we'll have an a tag and again you can format this however you want let's have a class of nav bar dash brand Now I'm gonna have a href, just put hash so it doesn't actually go anywhere. But you you know you can make it go wherever you want. And I'm just gonna put the text in that bar. You can think of this like the logo or like the text name of your website. And now we're gonna put a button. I'm gonna have a class of navbar dash toggle type equals button data dash toggle equals collapse data dash target equals epic navbar this is the navbar that it's you know part of which will be creating just after this button and this area dash controls equals you just put it the same as the id that we've just put there area dash expanded equals false like so and area dash label 
equals tab navigation. We all see this. This is just for the attributes. And now in here, we're going to put a span. Uh, we're going to put a class of navbar toggler dash icon. So this is. Okay, I am back. So yeah, I just had to restart the computer. I closed a bunch of things down. That's why I'm not doing it. There was, uh, I did restart and it's all good in the hood now. Okay, so yep, that was it. We're doing the button. That's all done for the button now. We're gonna have the sort of main area that can collapse depending on the size of the screen. So this is gonna be a div, a class of collapse. Navbar dash collapse and an ID of and the ID will be uh, what we put here. So this is what it's actually referring to this button. It's okay. So yep, that's it for this. Inside of here is where we're gonna have a bunch of content. So first of all we're gonna put an unordered list and we'll put a class of navbar dash nav then mr dash auto so this auto margin on the right margin at the bottom will put two and margin bottom dash large will put zero it just you know just makes it look a lot more pleasing aesthetically speaking okay so let's at least add some nav items so to, to, to do that put a list item put class and put nav dash item and we're gonna need we're gonna have a total of four of these and they're gonna have you know different stuff inside but we'll just duplicate this you can have as many as you want that's totally up to you obviously if you have too many it can look a bit too cluttered and if it's on a small screen size it may not look very good so just bear that in mind but other than, other than how it looks no actual limitation on how many items you can put in there there isn't a restriction for example okay so first one we're gonna have an a class now dash link and i'm gonna put this as active so it's almost like we're on this web page or this you know this page on the website area dash current and we'll say the current thing is the page href the put hash and let's put home here so that's very common to have some sort of home link inside and then we'll have an a class now dash link you probably only want one that's active there's only one really let's say page if this is what they're referring to would ever be you know you would ever be on we're going to put on href and for the text just put something like link let's keep it simple now what we're going to do this one we're going to make a lot more com no when i say a lot more complex just a little bit we're just going to make this into a drop down just to show you how you can add other items in there as well so a class equal nav dash link and then we need a class of drop down toggle drop down dash toggle a h ref hash then we need an id nav bar drop down and we'll have a role and the role will be button and the data dash toggle so what is it toggling it's toggling some sort of drop down so feel free to check out my separate video covering drop downs and all the little things that you can do with that so i'm just glancing over it for the most part the drop down will be a little quicker false in here we'll literally have the text drop down now we need to actually have the drop down itself so this is going to be an unordered list and it's going to have a class of drop down menu area dash labeled by navbar drop down basically what we've put here we're going to put that there and now in here we need a few just drop down items so we need a link i mean a 
list item not a link a list item what else do we need a class again feel free to check out the drop down video and the drop down page for the api guide on bootstrap for more information because you know, obviously you can organize it and put whatever elements you want in there this is just a example that i think looks pretty good and demonstrates the feature that i'm trying to showcase in this video which is a navbar okay so we're gonna have another one and it's called this another action and then we'll have like a separator list item hr tag having this closing one is not necessary i know a lot of people have asked me why do i put it in there you know honestly it's just a habit one if you use something like xhdml which is like xml with html then in xml if they're very strict with the tags all tags have to be closed even if they do not have a corresponding you know separate close tag the way list items or unordered lists or divs or spans or most you know html html tags do so again it doesn't break it it's just i think one i like the look of it and two i think this is a good habit to be in because closing a tag is better if you don't need to close it then not closing the tag when you do need to close it okay so it's almost like insurance almost okay so we're gonna have another one of these items again this is we're just gonna keep it the same and just put something else like something like that okay so now what we're gonna do is implement the final nav item in here and i'll make this one like a disabled one so you can see you can use you know disabled items in there as well so depending maybe if they're a certain type of user or they're on a certain page they can't use this particular nav item so i'm going to put nav dash link disabled that is what makes it disabled and ahref as hash we'll put tab index as negative one so you can't tab onto it an area disabled equals true and we'll put disabled there so that's just what it's showing in terms of the text now what we're going to do is add a little form for a search button as well like a search box so that's very common to have in nav bars as well so if you search on the website especially if you're on an e-commerce platform or a social media platform they'll have something like this so d-flex for the class and we'll put an input class 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 form dash control mr dash two and we'll put a type of search placeholder search area dash label equals search and we'll put a button here as well which is what you would essentially click on to you know search using this input you can always click enter as well but you can disable that if you don't want that uh, so btn btn dash outline dash success feel free to modify this however you want and put whatever type of button you want in there submit search save and we should be ready to have a look okay so this little button uh, is not showing up properly see what's wrong with it because it shouldn't actually be showing up there but something is wrong with this button or something 